Welcome to Clinical Horizon. In today's session, we'll explore azithromycin, one of the most commonly prescribed macrolide antibiotics. We'll discuss its clinical applications, mechanism of action, pharmacokinetics, recommended dosages, and important precautions every healthcare professional should keep in mind. Let's begin. Clinical Uses Azithromycin is widely used in clinical practice for treating respiratory tract infections such as pneumonia, bronchitis, and sinusitis. It's also effective in soft tissue infections, sexually transmitted infections like chlamydia and gonorrhea, and traveler's diarrhea caused by Campylobacter. It's often used in otitis media and pharyngitis and is also important in prophylaxis and treatment of Mycobacterium avium complex, especially in immunocompromised individuals. Though it has been explored during the COVID-19 pandemic, it is not routinely recommended unless there's a confirmed bacterial co-infection. Spectrum It covers a broad range of organisms including both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria, as well as atypical pathogens such as chlamydia trachomatis, mycoplasma pneumonia, and legionella. However, it's not effective against most anaerobic bacteria. Mechanism of Action Azithromycin works by binding to the 50S subunit of the bacterial ribosome, thereby inhibiting protein synthesis. This results in a bacteriostatic effect, meaning it halts bacterial growth. In high concentrations or against very sensitive organisms, it can act bactericidally. Pharmacokinetics The drug is well-absorbed orally with about 37% bioavailability. It has excellent tissue distribution and a long elimination half-life of nearly 68 hours, allowing for once-daily dosing and shorter treatment durations. It undergoes minimal liver metabolism and is primarily excreted via bile. Dosage In adults, for community-acquired pneumonia, we start with 500 mg on the first day, followed by 250 mg daily for the next four days. For chlamydia, a single 1-gram dose is effective. Gonorrhea requires a 2-gram dose often combined with ceftriaxone. For MAC infections, 500 mg daily is used in combination therapy. In pediatric patients, the dose typically starts with 10 to 12 mg per kilogram on day 1, then 5 mg per kilogram from day 2 to 5. The drug is available in tablet, suspension, and intravenous forms. Adverse effects. Common side effects include gastrointestinal symptoms like nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Rare but serious adverse effects include QT interval prolongation, hepatotoxicity, and severe allergic reactions such as Stevens-Johnson syndrome. It is contraindicated in patients with a prior history of cholestatic jaundice or hepatic dysfunction related to azithromycin. Interactions. Precautions. Avoid co-administration with magnesium or aluminum, containing antacids as they reduce absorption. Use caution when the patient is on warfarin due to enhanced anticoagulant effects. Avoid combining it with other QT-prolonging drugs like amiodarone or fluoroquinolones. Azithromycin is considered safe in pregnancy, but caution is required in elderly patients and those with liver disease. To summarize, azithromycin is a potent, broad-spectrum antibiotic with the advantages of short-course therapy and excellent tissue penetration. It must, however, be used responsibly with attention to its cardiac and hepatic side effects. Avoid routine use in viral infections, including COVID-19. So that was a closer look at azithromycin. Powerful, practical, and widely used. But like all medications, its true strength lies in how wisely we use it. As clinicians, every prescription we write is a decision that impacts not just one patient, but the future of antibiotic effectiveness. Let's stay informed, stay responsible, and always put patient safety first. Thank you for joining me on Clinical Horizon. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, stay curious, stay compassionate, and keep learning.